Looks like OpenAI is giving us an early Christmas present as today, a part of their 12th day of the 12 days of OpenAI campaign, they have launched a huge new update where they have officially introduced the O3 and the O3 Mini. Now, this was super unexpected as they had just recently launched the O1 Pro just a week ago. But this O3 model is absolutely insane as this new model scores an 87 percentage on the ARC AGI benchmark. For the people who do not understand what this means, this model achieves the same sort of human performance in most areas, which is just insane. In other words, it's really close to achieving AGI. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves as there is still a lot of work that needs to be completed to achieve something like AGI. Now, there will be two sets of new models, the O3 and the O3 Mini. As of now, the models aren't available just yet and the pricing hasn't been fully structured. However, the O3 high tune model is expected to be priced around $1,000, which is just too pricey. The O3 and the O3 Mini are basically two different distinct reasoning models that are designed to deliver impressive performance across various sorts of tasks like math, coding, and even complex reasoning. You have adjustable thinking times, where it supports three reasoning effort modes to customize response times based on the task complexity. So you have three different criteria. You have the low reasoning effort, which is gonna be giving you fast responses for simpler problems. You have the medium reasoning effort, which is based on moderate complexity tasks. And then you have the high reasoning effort, which is where you have longer thinking time for complex challenges. You have a self-evaluation capability with this model where it can write and execute scripts to evaluate its own performance, showcasing its adaptability, which is why it is performing so well in terms of the ARC AGI benchmark. There is also improved latency where there's low reasoning effort mode with near instant response times comparable to even GPT-4 Turbo. You also have a medium and high mode which is significantly improved with latency compared to the O1 Mini. But obviously, that's going to come with a higher cost. Now, as I mentioned at the start, it achieves an 87 percentage on the ARC AGI benchmark, which is a massive improvement over GPT-4's 5% in 2024. Now, this O3 model is demonstrating groundbreaking task adaption, approaching human-level performance in these novel tasks. It was tested on the semi-private eVault with 100 private tasks, as well as the public eVault with 400 different public tasks. And these are two different data sets in which they're testing this model on various tasks. And essentially, the O3 excelled both in high efficiency, where it recorded a 75.7 percentage and a low efficiency of 87.5 percentage modes. Now, for the people who do not understand that, there's basically two different types of tunes. You have the low tuned and the high tuned model and where they recorded the performance of these two models. Something funny I found while I was reading this paragraph is that they basically said that they could pay a human to solve ARC AGI tasks for roughly $5 per a task. Whereas if you have O3 doing those different tasks, it would require $17 to $20 per task in low compute mode only, not the high compute mode. This is the low compute mode, which essentially means that it is currently something that can solve these tasks, but it is not efficient in terms of its expenditure, in terms of using resources. So there's a lot of improvements that need to be made and they're actually expecting these improvements to be made in the coming years. Now I know I said that this is a step forward to AGI and I know you will see a lot of different YouTube titles or any sort of video showcasing this model saying that this is AGI, this is AGI, but that's not actually the case. You might even see that with my video, but this is something that is definitely a model that shows remarkable generalization capabilities and it has made significant strides, but it fails on simple tasks that humans find trivial. Now, just because this model is achieving a high benchmark score on ARC AGI doesn't mean that it is actually equating to achieving AGI, which is something that they stated in this paragraph. It still fails at these simple tasks, which is why it is currently in development and there's gonna be progress made over the next few years on getting closer to this point where we can achieve AGI. But right now we have a couple of different challenges like ARC AGI 2, where they've expected to expose O3's limitations further. And this is something that they're gonna try to do where they can have it so that the scores are comparable to human scores 
Right now, we can see on Arc AGI 2, it isn't achieving the same sort of score. It's only achieving a 30% even at high compute, whereas a smart human, or they say a smart human, would still be able to score over 95% with no training, which is just something that we have a lot of work to do to achieve a standard of AGI. Let's now take a look at the O3 model performance further in detail. It is something that does exceptionally well in various benchmarks. Starting off with software engineering tasks, we've all heard of Sway Benchmark. It is actually achieving a 71.7 percentage in terms of accuracy, which is surpassing its predecessor, the O1 Preview, as well as the O1. And I know some of you will also say the O1 and the O1 Preview failed to even beat Sonnet 3.5. But in this case, we have this new O3 model, which is achieving a 71.7 percentage, where it is even outperforming entry-level programmers. Now, on competitive coding, it scores an ELO rating of 2,727, which is placing it among elite coders with advanced reasoning and coding skills. This is just insane, because not many models are capable of even achieving within the top 5,000 scores. Now, in terms of mathematics, it excels on the most challenging mathematic benchmarks, where it showcases significant advancements in problem solving and abstract reasoning. It sets a new standard with all of these different scores, and obviously it's bridging the gap between human-level expertise and machine-driven efficiency. With the O3 and the O3 Mini, they've added new API features where it introduces key enhancements where it will definitely help a lot of developers. Now, you have function calling features of simplifying integrations and execution with this new O3 model. You have structured outputs, where it's going to enable precise and organized data retrieval, where it could be used for better usability. And lastly, you have a new API feature of developer messages that will basically provide tailored interactions for more seamless debugging and collaboration. Now, I want you to take a look at the demo videos that OpenAI had actually posted about the new O3 model. We asked the model to write a script to evaluate itself um, through, uh, on this like hard GPQA data set uh, from a UI, right, from this code generator and executor created by the model itself in the first place. Um, so I'm testing out O3 mini high first. And so the task is that I'm asking the model to uh, use Python to implement a code generator and executor. So if I launch this, uh, run this like Python script, it will launch a server um, and um, uh, locally with a with a with a UI that contains a text box, and then we can uh, make coding requests in a text box. It will send the request to call O3 Mini API, and O3 Mini API will solve the task and return a piece of code, and it will then uh, save the code locally on my desktop and then open a terminal to execute the code. So if, if we copy the code and paste it to our server, and then we would like to run, launch this server. So we should get a text box when you're launching it. Yeah. Okay, great. Oh yeah, I, see I hope so. so. Yeah. It seems to be launching something. Okay. Oh, great. <laughs> we, have a, we have a UI where we can enter some coding prompts and send it in the code UI, and or which part is the options, right? Yes. And then formulate all the questions, and, to, and then ask the model to answer it, and then parse the result, and then to grade it. That's actually uh, blazingly fast. Yeah, and it's actually really fast. Mm -hmm. Oh, it actually returns the results. Okay. It's 61.62%, uh, right? 62%, right? Cool, it's cool. a low reasoning effort model, and it's mm -hmm. actually pretty fast. Then full evaluation in, the, uh, in the, a minute. Now, this is definitely a great model, and it is definitely a step forward to AGI. I really appreciate what OpenAI has been doing in terms of continuously working on improving the AI space even further. I'll leave all the links in the description below, but in essence, this is definitely really, really impressive as it introduces many different enhancements to the AI space where you have this new standard in the AI performance space where it's bridging a gap between human level expertise and machine driven efficiency. I'll leave all the links that I use in today's video in the description below. Make sure you follow me on the Patreon as well as my Twitter page. And lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video, and take a look at our previous videos because there's a lot of content that you'll definitely benefit from. But with that thought guys, have an amazing day, spread positivity, and I'll see you guys fairly shortly.
Peace out, fellas.